lead form extensions even worth it? Um, if you've been exploring in your Google Ads account the different ad assets or ad extensions is what they were formerly called, you may have come across the lead form extension or asset option um, within your account. And you might be wondering if it's even worthwhile to set it up because there is a little bit of a technical aspect in terms of getting that all set up. So just wanted to walk you through what a lead form is on Google as well as share my personal thoughts on whether I think it's worth it or not. So let's go ahead and take you through in the platform here. Um, so uh, once you're in your account, you would just go to ads and assets and then assets on the bottom here, then go to lead form and then you would click on this plus icon if you wanted to set up a lead form extension. Now lead form extensions can appear on search, display, YouTube and Gmail. Um, you can apply them to different um, areas of your account, campaign, ad group, um, and essentially you would just create a headline, put your business name description, and you would be able to ask um, questions in regards to pretty much qualifying your lead um, so that you can follow up with them. Note that some of these um, some of these fields will be pre-filled if the person is like logged into their Gmail account, for instance, uh, Google might already have their information. So it might be really easy to capture that end user's information um, so that they don't necessarily need to sit there and fill it out. It would already be pre-filled for, uh, for you uh, based off of uh, the information that Google has about this person's profile. So essentially what it would look like is um, I can probably share a better example on the next screen, but just wanted to show this is how you would go about setting up. It's a lead form that will show up on your specific ad. When someone clicks on the ad, it will open up in the search engine results page. Um, so the user doesn't necessarily have to go to your landing page um, and they would be able to fill it out without even having to see your website or landing page. Um, so I'm going to show you an example. So this is just how to go about setting it up. An example of it would be something like this. Um, so this is not definitely not in English, but just wanted to show you like what it would look like. So this is what it would look like on um, mobile. You'd set it up here and the lead form extension would be this. It would be a button here that the end user would click and then it would open and then this is what the lead form would look like. Da, da, da. It would look like this. So essentially you, you as the advertiser would get to choose what fields you wanna put in here that you wanna collect in regards to the lead. Um, so name, email, phone number, postcode. Like I mentioned, some of this information will be automatically pre-filled because um, Google or Gmail already has this information about the user. So the user doesn't necessarily need to fill it out. Um, so you might be getting a lot of Gmail emails coming through here. So if you're in B2B um, and you prefer to get company emails, you definitely want to make sure that you put company email in here um, just so that the end user knows not to put their personal email or let Google put their personal information in here. Um, so yeah, that's essentially what it would look like. And remember, this is all within the search engine results page still. So this is not on your website. You will have the option to add a, an image. So I highly recommend that if you were going to go this route, um, just to help with like building credibility. Um, in terms of what happens is when the user fills out the form, you can ask as many questions as you want to pre-qualify them. Um, but of course, the more fields that you add, the less of a conversion you're going to get. Um, and then what's going to happen is after they fill out the form, then you would set up a submission message that would you would enter in here and it would appear here. And then you would have to set up some type of API access through um, Zapier um, so that some of that, uh, that data gets sent to your email or you can log into Google Ads. Um, and you can download the leads. So you won't, if you don't set up a Zapier notification, 
which is a third party um, platform that allows you to connect um, email and, um, and the lead form extensions, then you're not gonna get notified right away that you have leads, which is a really big downside of this lead form extension. Um, so that's one thing to note. Um, but if you wanted to go in and check on a daily basis how many leads you're getting, you can check within Google Ads as well to see um, if you set it up, what type of leads, um, how many leads you're getting from your lead form extension. Now, the big question that I'm going to answer is, is our lead extensions even worthwhile? And what type of results have I seen personally from it? Um, and personally, when it comes to lead form extensions, I will say that I have, and I've run lead form extensions multiple times since they first came out in beta. Uh, from my personal experience, I have not seen great results come from it. It's not necessarily that um, the leads are bad. It's just that I don't see many leads come from lead form extensions. I've tried this on B2B, I've tried this on B2C lead generation campaigns. It doesn't really work. And I'll tell you the reason why I don't think it works. Um, and I don't think it works because people want to learn more about you um, and your company before submitting a form. So just imagine, you know, pretty much having a, you know, request for information when you haven't even learned about the company yet. Um, so I think that that's really important and probably the reason why it doesn't work that well is because people want to be educated first before they give up their personal information rather than just giving up their personal information without even, um, without even uh, getting to know you and your company. Maybe it might work for some uh, emergency based businesses like locksmith, garage door repair, stuff like that. But typically, and I haven't tried it out on those businesses because those tend to be more phone call based. Um, so more people will tend to call rather than submit a form and wait around for someone to follow up. Um, so what I'll say is, has it worked? No, it hasn't personally for me. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts if you've actually seen success within what niches you've found it to be successful in. But my personal thoughts is it hasn't really made much of an impact. I was really excited to see it um, work well, but um, unfortunately in the case of Google Ads, I have not seen it work well. I have seen it work in YouTube ads, but the problem is I was running it for a B2B company and we were getting a lot of personal emails, not business emails. So we had to go back and you know make some changes. So that's why I made that comment about collecting business emails and the business name if you are a B2B company, if that's a, the way that you wanna go about doing it. So um, is it worth it? It's worth a potential shot um, if you are in B2B, um, but if you're in B2C, not necessarily. Um, it might depend too on the niche. I personally haven't seen it work that well, but would love to see if maybe it worked well for you. Um, so let me know. Um, and if you're looking to have your Google ads managed, I would love to have a conversation with you. Feel free to check out the description below on booking a discovery call with me. And I'd love to take a look at your account and let you know how I could potentially help you get better results. So that's it for today and I'll see you in the next video.